like the trees in general? Why do you think you want to go on the streets and yeah. ask you about that? Okay, Chris, do you want to come up forward to do a bit of camera again just with the lads behind? <laughs> Three, two, one, St Matthew's Church, Steve Wraith and Eric Mason. St Matthew's Church, Eric, synonymous with a career story because it's where the, the three services were held with the three brothers. Were, were you here for, for each of the funerals? I was or? here for the first two funerals, Ronnie and Charlie. I was in the jail for Reggie's funeral. But um, the reason Ronnie had a great, great um, following for the funeral uh, because I think people were starting to talk about comparing the, the local tearaways with the old time people. The, you know, people were saying, oh, you know, the young fellas, so the, these young kids here today, they're nothing like the twins used to be, and everybody the local. It was a kind of a thing, they, they had people on their side. Even the, the people on the barracks around here, I spoke to them, people, and they say, oh, nice one and all that, and always said nice things about the twin. But we never had any muggings and all that kind of stuff around here. I mean, they did, people generally did uh, rate the twins, you know what I mean? And uh, there was no uh, anti, you know, or they, they, you know, I've heard stupid people, uh, one particular guy I met at the races, and uh, who, who's on? We borrowed the television stuff for, for Radio 4, for TV4. And uh, he said to the bloke who was doing the TV thing, uh, Who's that bloke? He said, Oh, he's a friend of the Cray Twins. And the bloke said, They deserve to die in Nick Jail. He never even knew them, he knew nothing about them. And, uh, but the, the majority of people in this area, and most people, throughout the whole of the country had a feeling, you know, that the uh, the Grey Twins weren't any threat to them and they, they always felt, and they was nice to be with them. People on the stalls, they'd, they'd go and they'd always say nice things about them, you know what I mean? Why do you think that the, uh, the, the public turned out en masse? for the career funerals? Do you think it was curiosity? Do you think it was because people genuinely wanted to see um, the careers and show the support for the careers? I or think it was more the support than the... Uh, I think they felt they'd done long enough, you know. They'd done much more time. People that get done for horrific crimes are out within a few years. And in them days, it was like, when are they gonna let the twins out? When they got, when they died, started dying in the neck. That's when uh, people used to really generally, you could fit, tell you spoke to anybody, publicans, people in stores, people in shops. They, they didn't have, they was pleased that, you know, at least hoping that Reggie would to be, come out, but he died, unfortunately, the minute he comes out. Why do you think the prison authorities made such an example of Reggie Cree in particular. Why do you think that the? Why do you think it was because he showed no remorse? I think I don't think the penal system has anything to do with it. It all comes from the Home Office. It's not nothing to do with the, the. Because I know I've found it myself. If you're a decent bloke in jail and you you don't have to be a, I mean I'm. I probably attack more prison officers than anybody else in prison get any time through my life because I'd been, that's all I'd known when I first went into jail. But I went into jail recently, many, you know, and after being out for quite a long time, I went into jail and I found them pretty decent people and they helped me get through my sentence. I'm here now. And uh, I think that the violence and stuff is taken out of, out of this system now. And uh, I don't think the, the, the prison officers themselves don't have any say in the matter. And the, the, parole, the parole boards, you know, they, I think they, they lean over backwards to guys that try to be sensible about in life, you know what I mean? Do you think 30 years was a just sentence for the careers? Do you think it should have been less? Less, less. 
if you look at, uh, you know, from my view, I, I think it's horrific that Jack Behan died, but uh, 30 years in jail is a very, very long time, and I mean, people that uh, do molest children and do dreadful crimes against women and and do horrific, horrific things in people's houses and all that kind of stuff is, uh, they don't do half of that time, you know what I mean? Did Reggie and Ronnie Cray any show any remorse for their crimes in conversation with you no, during I, the sentence? No, I, I must say, I must say, they, they did, they did think they was doing what they thought was favours and they was trying to portray themselves as people that had done, but the people, as far as I'm concerned, when Jack the Hat died in uh, Long Carroll's house, that was a liberty because Jack was okay, he was a good guy, he didn't deserve that kind of death. Do you think Jack the Hat would have killed the Crears if he'd had the chance? I'll, I'll tell you what, if he, if he knew that he was being taken to his death, he would have done some damage. He was capable of looking after himself and uh, it would have taken more than one or two people to do him. Spot on. Brilliant. <laughs> Good that, Eric. Information from yeah. Me. What was that, Eric? Did you just want to say that again to the camera? No. This was, the Marcus of Cornwallis yeah. wasn't wasn't one of the locals, but no. people used to come here and wait for them. Yeah, I'm hoping that they would come in.
just getting up. So we've got police who so were right there from the east coming here and sit here for an hour or two every morning regularly. We've the whole day. Has it changed much over the years? Yes, yes, changed a bit but I mean it was you know this furniture and all the I mean the atmosphere is still nice. You know, people are very nice. Whereas, Someone want to come back to them days. This is the place to come to. Go your colour, please. I should imagine the old man's been dead quite a long time. I don't know. I'll have a talk in a minute. Is this where the incident happened with, um, with the police officer was running yeah. outside the front of here? Yeah, yeah. Right, out, right outside this. Can you remember what happened? Do you know no. the story? No. no. I know, I know he chinned the cop. That's right. Is there anything else in the memories that you've got? No, it's, it's all, just somewhere it's it's all it's a meeting place, you know what I I've not pushed you in any of them. No, I can't. Just bring you some sugar. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Yes. Can you tell please? Steve Wraith and Eric Mason outside English's funeral parlour. English's funeral parlour, Eric, uh, where the bodies of Ron, Reg and Charlie were yeah, kept in state. Yeah, they've all laid there. And the people have been, you couldn't move down here for uh, all the funerals and it was just done very nicely. So, uh, yeah, it was, for me it was sad days really, them funerals. Charlie especially, I know. He's, he was a nice bloke, Charlie Cravens, a general. And uh, I came to his funeral, yeah. And uh, it was sad, it was really sad. Because he never deserved going to jail. He was fitted up exactly the same as what I was. And uh, I, yeah, I have bad memories of, of this place. There you go, this. Their, their funerals were well supported and you couldn't look. There was thousands of people around these streets, couldn't go anywhere. Did you actually go in and pay your respects to...? Yeah, to each and every one. Except for Reggie, I wasn't there for him. But, uh, yeah, I went in and, uh, sadly enough, I mean, there was people that I didn't even want to speak to in there. And, uh, you know, I wish I won't even go over that one. Just forget about them. You know, the people that I, I don't like, and that's it. Unfortunately, they had nothing. Well, they, unfortunately, they were like, they in there to be buried, and that was it. Why do you think so many people are obsessed with the craze, Eric? Why do you think, why do you think there's this obsession? Why do you think the legend, the myth, if you like, lives on? Because they, they were, they were kind of nice people to meet. You know, 
do you know something? I'm going to tell you now. Reggie Clay phoned me up one day and said to me, you met that uh, fellow in Newcastle. And I think you remember when I came up to Newcastle many years ago and uh, Billy Daniels, the black singer, used to sing the old black magic. And he said to me and Reggie that night, he said, I must introduce you to Frank Sinatra. And uh, we got it on. We went to Stockholm because there was a match on there. Floyd Patterson and Eddie Machin for, uh, for the World Heavyweight title. And um, me and Reggie was invited to come over and Frank Sinatra booked the whole full floor and we were guests of his. And uh, he introduced us to Dino Cellini that night and we met in a club and it was magic. And from then on, Dino Cellini, I mean, I didn't know, I knew he was an American mafia man and all that, but he was the number one man at the time. And I went to New York, and I went to Florida, and I met them, and I had an absolutely wonderful time. Never done any business with them, but they were so... We'd done them a lot of favours when they came over here, and they opened the casinos here. And we we was getting a very good living from, from them. They didn't need dormant or anything. We we kept... we done secure, security for them. And that was while Dino Cellini was over here and eventually they all got slung out of there because of people finding out who they had been. I didn't know, I mean, whatever, they, they were gentlemen as far as we were concerned. And they, every Friday I used to go down and get an envelope and I used to go, where we've just been now, leeches, I used to go on a Saturday morning and take four grand down and we went a thousand pound each from Reggie and Charlie every Saturday morning. Good old guy. Seven Evering Road. Is it? Eight seven. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get the uh, club as well? Yeah. Oh, good. How's it going with them? How's it going with 
Can I get the back of your tour list, Steve? Huh? Can I get the back of your tour list, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're good, mate. We're good. good. Yeah. Um, it's going well so far. Uh, I'm going to call it now. I'm just going to call it now. Great. Right. You got a ring? No, uh, it's my wedding ring. Ain't nothing to go away, mate. No, no, it's okay. Good. I'd fucking like you to take the wife with it if you could. Make a dispute. It's precious, though, isn't it, yeah? Well, that's a high degree of pressure. Rich, treat me castle, and I'll see you later. Sorry? I don't know yet. It's the cheapest divorce ever, bro. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Does that say ratners? Oh, that's about one percent gold, isn't it? <laughs> 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 there you go. I'll warm up better later on. I'm not with it yet. Yeah, man, I hope you don't fucking come out of it. You won't get blown. No. So, of course, you haven't introduced me yet. That's a very good old one. Oh, yeah. Nice one. Oh, Jay. Yeah. 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 I've heard a lot about yeah. you. Know, yeah, we just said in you somewhere. That's what I'm saying. I've heard a lot. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you a funny story. See if uh, you remember. I went to an house one day in. Um, what's his name? There's family of fires, boxes. Just, uh, near top. His wife come on, opened the door, and she said, Oh, there's a mate of yours in here. And it was Teddy Smith. Oh, that's so it. I said, He's dead now. Yeah. So I said, uh, Oh, fuck, 
fucking hell was he? So he said, uh, oh, he said uh, the twins asked uh, Billy Frost, will he go and yeah, he lay down? Go and lay down and keep out of the way. They're going to uh, have a movie that. Uh, but well, we did, didn't we? Didn't you read uh, Nipper Reed's book? Oh, did? No, I'm not read Yeah, it's, it's in all that. Uh, Connie wrote, he said, uh, he said uh, like Connie wrote to him, you know, and uh, wanted a thing, and uh, Tommy Cowley messed it all up, didn't he? Oh, so yeah. Smithy said to me, I'm taking his place and all that. Now, I, I knew that me and you, and uh, I think uh, Connie, Connie was all, we were all together only a, a week or so before. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think. So I thought, oh, have I got fucking Teddy Smith? He said, no, I'm coming and took Billy's place because he can't make, make it. <laughs> all you've got to do is go home and sleep. That's the old thing, though. You don't know. It was all bollocks anyway. Yeah. Oh, is that written here? The trouble with I'll the twins. Yeah. Yeah, it's all they hurt them, though. Yeah. If they'd have had any brains, they could have been multi-millionaires. Right, that's it. And, yeah. and it would have been a nick. No, no. But so the thing that the twins wanted knew, was respect, but they never got it east end. Charlie had it, Charlie yeah. Time. yeah. I respected you know, Charlie quite a lot. You know, but them two, you know, it was new. Well, then Reggie was gay, wasn't he? Yeah. Come out with search yeah. in my book, innit? Yeah. I called him. I mean, uh, in uh, 1960, he went with him and he called him and he called him and he called him and just vanished. Yeah. Yeah, he was a dodgy brat. 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 Mind you, he's on all of every and, time uh, you, you look at the television with Donny Hughes making up another and, uh, story about it. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, that way. happens all the time, doesn't it, Eric? You know, like uh, a lot of these things were rumours, weren't they? You know, oh. not real things, like, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, when I think back to them days, it was only people like you and I and. Uh, Connie and people like people slag Connie off now to me. Oh yeah, they do. But um, <laughs> was it Connie so never done a thing? No. He, he <laughs> no. He come at me when yeah. I went to live in Yorkshire. He was the first man I met with Billy Cox. Come up to see me. See yeah, yeah. And uh, took my kids hey, uh, out in the in the roller down to the racing and all that kind of thing. Nice man. He was a nice man. He was a very nice man. He still is a nice man, you know. Yeah, um, you, you see him, give him my regards. I will do I'll, that. I'll leave you my, and, uh, my, my, my mobile number. One mobile of yours. I've got it on my phone. Oh, that's, yeah. that's one I left at your house. That's, yeah. yeah. Give it to the Connie. Yeah, I'll get them to give you a ring. I think Billy's got it as well, Billy Cox. Anyway, yeah. he knows. He's supposed to be here, Bill, wasn't he? Anyway, yeah, he uh, said they got down to the caravan and have only got pissed. Anyway, he started slapping the boy about. When they got in the caravan, the boys went over to Reggie, like, you know, Ronnie he stayed with Did he? Yeah. My mate had to bring you back in the car. We'll wait for him to That's the last word of Yeah. No, 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 no. And that ain't come out of nothing, is it? No. I was thinking, no book. How old were you getting, Eric? No, no, no. He's crazy. No, no, he's in his 50s. He's my son. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? People say to me, I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, and it's you know, I'm 75, but uh, <laughs> I'll see anything like flies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mind you, I've got to try to look after myself for a few years. Is a... What we're doing, we're just doing an open chat for the first half an hour, just a chat with everybody. Open chat with these notorious men. I'm always surrounded by notorious men. <laughs> Aren't I just? <laughs> Hi, darling. I'm all right, and you, honey? Yeah, I'm not bad. Yeah. How are you, darling? She don't remember me. I'm asking if I've got here. It's probably Ronnie Cry. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> or, or do you think, it's, think, it's, or do you think it's his spirit? It might, it might be his ghost. Do you think it's his spirit? It could possibly be his no, ghost. How are you? Uh, right. good, good. You don't remember me, do you? I do, and I look at Eric. Yeah. yeah. How are you? Smashing. You, you, you never me? alter. You uh -huh. never alter. I'm not going to alter. How can I alter? I'm the godmother, aren't I? 
How can I also with all this lot to look after? <laughs> oh, yeah, look. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an East End girl, but I'm really an Arsenal. But I'm really an Arsenal girl, aren't I? Oh, make sure he sees it. It's when I go back to Manchester, I can show them all up. <laughs> <laughs> with the gunners. Oh, wow. Send another shirt up, Fanny. Huh? Right, so he can wind everyone up in Manchester with the Arsenal shirt. Yeah, he's going to. Yeah, he's going to frame it and display it throughout Manchester. Yeah. Are you having memories here, William. Eric? Arsenal shirt. I've got great memories here. God. Hi, Les. Hi. I'll see all the other half are over there. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. We're back in here after all this time. <laughs> Every time I come here, I think of the other two. Oh. That's lovely and cold. Your dad was yeah, not bad. Yeah, he's a I think of uh, so many people when I'm in here. I come in and I can see people sitting there, you know. Even, you know, I like, can well, just go back so many years, don't we, all yeah. of us? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Sorry? Chris. Chris. Have we seen you before, Chris? My name's Flanagan, yes? Where, where have I seen you before, honey? Yeah, i Um, whose funeral? I do all the funerals. Laurie. Oh, Laurie's funeral, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. I'm fine. I was doing a, a more filming last night in the palm tree, half a mile up the road. Another film for about East End pubs, East End people, East End characters. Um, there was a band going on in, in, in the background, you know, like lots of jazz. And I mean, that's an old original pub. It's got the same old tiles on the wall, like 1950, 1960. So, um, you know, we said what we had to say. At my phone, and they say, No, not, 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 not the Arsenal. What can I do? How long have you been here today? Yeah, yesterday. Oh, hi. Well, he didn't tell me to be here till half past five. Where have you been? What other pubs have you been? Any other pubs? Not been along the road to the Grave Morris, where the twins used to go, where they had all their secret meetings? No? Oh, yeah, yeah. Steve! I was in the old brush shop then. I've whacked the geese and called the geese and I was checked out and was having a pop of music. Yeah, but he was in there, wasn't he? Teddy Fleming. Yeah, just four doors and all. I was going to say, you know, where the twins had all their little secret meetings and all their little whatever, whatever. Well, I've driven around the circle three times to park. Have you? Yeah. And um, I went in. I went in there. I said, "Is there any chance of moving them?" Yeah. You know, and they say, uh, "Well, we can't." You know, it's the market people. Plus, there's a big band outside. I thought it might be something to do with building. Yeah. You know, but anyway, oh, I've parked absolute opposite, and I borrowed a disabled band because <laughs> I'm on a yellow line, so I can have three hours for that. Yeah? Oh, that's spot on. And I've walked into this guy, and I went. He said, they're all out the back. I think the film is finished. I said, oh, well, Marshmallow of Hyatt is on Steve Ray. Mm -hmm. I haven't paid for it. <laughs> I've just poured it out and walked through. Because he said he's out the back. I went, oh, well, it's on. it'll have to be on him. He told no, me to be at Harvest Five. That's you did, didn't you? Yes, you were spot and on. And Joe? I tell you what, we did well, we did well to get round here at the, at the time we did after, after all the madness And I was filming had. three hours last night in the palm tree. Were you? Half an hour up the road. <laughs> Well, I mean, not being funny, all we done was just went over the park and you made your own front up, didn't you? Yes, you knocked a bit of wood off and that was your gun. And you made a scooter. Always scooter, that's right, yeah. I remember I remember that soapbox, I remember I was living on the edge of the road and that. No, but I mean, thanks I'm going to go and sit there with my boys. <laughs> I was coming to. I was coming to. Had a man. You just made a hand off. Ah, look. Break up the black clothes and the shaven head. Yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah. 
Oh no, that's uh, crazy. That's crazy. Isn't it? The yeah. worst thing that ever happened here was the Jew Jews moved out of this community. Yeah. Because you ain't got a Jewish shop in the East End there. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying that on the road. Yeah. yeah, yeah my right. grandfather was a rabbi. Yeah, you know? right. Type bastard. Yeah. When <laughs> <laughs> you, you go around Brick Lane, <laughs> thinking them days, you're Jewish, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. Brick Lane. Yeah. That's it. But, uh, well, what about when the twins had the, uh, the the party uh, uh, for the nurses uh, in the Kentucky? So me and Harry Abrams walked in there. Yeah. So Reggie come round. We got in there to have a drink. They had um, Billy Daniels in there. It's oh, old Billy, yeah. Magic. yeah. And we're having a drink, and uh, um, he's come over, Reggie. He says something to Harry, and he walked away. And I said, "What's that?" Al? Oh, he said, "You're in it." I said, "What?" He looked right back behind the bar, I said, fuck off. He said, go on, do it. He said, then I'll ask a favour. So I, stuck. I said, all right. I got pissed myself behind the bar. As you would. Yeah. And, uh, do you remember, uh, uh, what was their uncle's name? Oh, what was his name? Behind the grey hair fella. And uh, anyway, they collected that, they got the, went up to all gate to all the Jewish people who was buying bank gear and that, like bank yeah. cloth and all that. Yeah. And they sent the book to them to make them come down because they're auctioning in the box of chocolates, like, you know, like, that's a big yeah. box, right? Well, so they're all in the bar and they started the auction. They had a big old wheat book, big carton on the stage. So they said, right, we're going to start the auction now. Who will start the bidding? So one of them, I'll put the hand up, I'll be the tenor. Imey got a dig, twenty pound. It went up hundred pound. Up down to Imey. Down to Imey. So what do you yeah. think they said? Yeah. What do you think? Imey put the chocolates back, and they're gonna go to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, there were some tears in some of them Jewish people's eyes. <laughs> and you know, part for some money. <laughs> yeah, but then when they cut it up, yeah, I was there. Poor old Charlie again. They made him help get all the money. They took all the yeah. money on the floor. Got two tables all yeah. together. Goose be ten bob notes then, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And they put all the money in stacks. Yeah. This is for the nurses in Bangor oh, yeah. Road Hospital. Yeah. That's ours, and that's for the charity. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got something yeah. though. They got something. I said to Ronnie, I said, well, then I'll get paid. Ronnie yeah. said, yeah, tomorrow. I'll tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. He was never greedy, hey. to me, Ronnie. No, never ever greedy, mate. No, he didn't no, money, he money, he would. He'd say to me, every time I drop him off it. anything, he'd go, you're the money, and I always went, no, I, I need some. And he always went, oh, there's a tenner. I mean, ten of us a week's wages, then, those. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people. You want to laugh, yeah, you want to laugh, this will, this will back you up. And I said that, like, every night. I used yeah. to take Harry, yeah. Harry Abrams and Elba Donoghue and him down to their bird's house. There was brasses in the uh, paddock. So he's knocking these brasses off in paddock and I should drop Harry off and him and them like a couple of the other firm and come home. They'd phone me up, come pick this up next morning, I'd do it. So it's Jeannie's birthday, the one that Harry's knocking off the brass. So they said, uh, uh, bring Lenny to the party, like, you know, because he's always bring the one up there. So the twist was out then, the chubby oh, checker. Yeah, yeah. Right? So we were in the party, this bird, oh, yeah, I tell you what, she had long blonde hair. A little mini skirt and a pair of legs, honestly, beautiful pair of legs I've ever seen. And Bunny came over, he'd been doing a twist run. He said, I'm sitting on the set here with Harry now. Oh, I used to think of going out. He said, uh, that bird fancy you. I said, fuck off. He said, no, she does. I said, oh, all right. He said, she come over to dance with you. So she came over, we had a dance. It's about three o'clock, I've asked three now. She said, uh, I'm tired. She said, would you take me home? I've got my car outside. It was a little MG Sports like. So I said, yeah, she said, uh, Harry said you, you're not a drinker. I said, that's right. So anyway, she gave me the keys, I took her to Kensington, and, and uh, underneath, like she had the old fucking feet. Yeah. <laughs> took her up to a flat, and oh, it's beautiful in there. And the bar was, oh, it's out of this world. So she made me a cocktail, never had a fucking cocktail, didn't know what cocktail was. <laughs> so she said to me, and if I go now and put something, uh, <laughs> something online yeah. she said I said no do what you like that yeah so she kissed me before she went she came back she had a fucking DA haircut it was a big no and then he was a puff yeah and then when I got back to Paddington 
it, like you go down here, yeah, he, he he they all look around the fucking curtains, have the apron's open yeah. the door, he said, Len, come and have it up, there's a redhead, he needs no fancy, you. Bastards, <laughs> 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 hey, hey, let's go, yeah. You were, you were tucked up like a kicker. <laughs> he yeah. got captured a couple of times like that. <laughs> yeah. Tucked up like a kicker. Okay. Brilliant. He had Brilliant. no woods once and made it. <laughs> <laughs> you never thought it was a geezer, though, not in a minute. Yeah, what about when she said what about when she said uh, she went to visit Ronnie in Bournemouth? Yeah. And it, uh, they came them on the Charlie on yeah. the arm and said, Charlie, would you pay on his bill? Yeah. How much is it? Nine hundred pounds. Nine hundred pounds. You can get, get me nine hundred pounds in a nick. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't know, I've come out and oh, yeah. 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 well, She used to be married to my mate, didn't she? Cox, oh, oh, right, yeah. 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 Terry Cox, yeah. he divorced her. Yeah, they come from all over the place. She was playing about. 150 letters. Bloody hell. You've got to get Lenny on there. Yeah. There we are. Um, Get in the boat, Come on, girl. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? There we go. Steve? I was at the funeral a few months ago. Who's that? Oh, he's a lot of Does he? Yeah. Oh, we need him. Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the cameras. Yeah. To the cameras. Hi. Hi, and cheers. Yep, spot on. Got that means that we can see, as you know, with the briefcase lot. They've just come from Denmark. I was with them last night in the palm tree filming. So, so that they, you know Joe that's with them. He does the business with them. Um, no, it was about East End pubs, East End carrot, um, how long you've been using the pubs, blah, blah, blah. It was good. Of course, we had the thunderstorm right in the middle of them filming. It's a big, big, old-fashioned pub, Steve. Have you never been there? Never been where you were. It's exactly the same as if it was, uh, let me think, say 1960 on the dock. You know red and gold wallpaper? You think the door's going to walk open and Ronnie Cray's going to walk in? That's what you feel like. Palm tree. Palm tree. Palm tree. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah, know. It's got grass outside and the canal, the, East yeah. End, the old, old East End canal running right past it. People sitting on the grass last night when the thunder... Was, was in the rain, and we were filming inside. The tiles are original, Steve. Yeah. You know, the old green and white yeah. tiles that you get around old fashioned oh, okay. and leaded Carrie. glass windows. <laughs> Carrie, we'll have to do a do -do. Hello, oh, right? haven't said hello to you yet. That's Rick. Hi, Rick. Oh, they'll be good. <laughs> when you the last they'll come out, Rick. Yeah, Your young, book yeah. signing. Yeah. Is the photographs that was taken there? I know it was a little while ago. I've actually put on my website now on the on the front. Yes, but I've chucked them on my website as well, so they're, they're on there now. They look they look alright. Flanagan's here. Me and you. Brilliant. Uh, where, where am I not? Lovely photo. <laughs> Brilliant. When did you bring it? I know, I know. Where is it now? Well, I've, I've got it at home, but I'll put it on the... I'll one. murder you, you know. I'll put it on my website. <laughs> You're actually right on the, on the front there. Does it look good? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Is it me and you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, who else? Just me and you? Yeah, me and you, yeah. It was taken at Steve's... Uh, the video launch. The video launch? The video launch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, how will I see you? Can I have a... Lenny Hamilton and Steve Wraith and the blind beggar. Lenny, the Korea twins... Um, heroes are villains. They were villains. They were stupid villains. If they'd have been, if they'd have left their own alone, they'd have been multi-millionaires today, and they probably wouldn't have been in it, you know. But the trouble is, they hurt their own, and uh, they're them. You know, you can only go so far, push people so far, and that's it, like you know. But uh, 
the reason why they, they, they didn't like Charlie is because people respected Charlie, the older brother. He was a nice fella, Charlie. And he got the respect that they always wanted but never got. You know? And I've seen them up, Charlie, in their ass, like, you know, I've been there while they've smacked him around the face and not in front of other people, but, you know what I mean? Don't do that type of thing. You were branded to be created to take of the book. Yeah. Can you explain, you know, why and, and... Yeah, well, I was in the Regency Club. I just come back from up north, just done a mansion up there, like, you know, because I was a jewel thief. And uh, I went around to my mate Harry, and he wasn't in, Jeannie's wife said, oh, I think it's down to Regency. That's where it all used to go. So I went down to Regency looking for him, but Harry wasn't there, and Fat Pat Connolly, he was at the camp with a fella and his girl, could, could have been his girl, his wife, I didn't even know him. So Pat's drink, because I've got them a drink, and as I'm getting them a drink, uh, I've got the fellow a drink, I said to the girl, well, what would you want, love? You know, what would you do? I said, if it was an old girl, I'd say, what do you want, lady? He pulled a tool out, went and cut me. So Pat's got hold of his wrist. I said, what are you doing? You don't do that to Lenny. So anyway, about 20 minutes later, he said, can I talk to you out in the toilet? Now I felt sort of a he feels embarrassed, like, you know. So I said, yeah, I'll talk to you, mate, out there. Well, I've done it years ago, like, you know. So, uh, I'm walking out, and as I'm walking out, someone shouted, hey, what's your back? He's only going to cut me down the back. So I've dived at the, the, the uh, door, and as I've got, the door's gone in, I fell on the floor. He's come at me with uh, this razor, and I've bobbed him, you know, duck and dive, and bang, I'll give him left and right, poke his nose. And uh, then Ricky Bloom, who was minding the club, he said, Len, you better have it away, to be murders. I said, I ain't done nothing. He said, I know you ain't. He said, well, you know who that is on the floor there? I said, no. He said, that's by the wall. I said, who the hell's he? He said, it's Buller's son. Buller wall was right friends with the twins. So they got me out of there. I found out they all went down, here we come, they're going to shoot me and everything. And then uh, I, I was living in Leverage Road at the time, and Andy Paul, he was a minder for the craze up the uh, Esmeralda's barn. And he come home. And uh, he said, Len, Ronnie wants you to get him on the phone. I said, what's the time, Andy? He said, it's just gone one. I said, now I'll go round Fort Valence in the morning. That's what we called their house like, you know. So he said, you better get up now, Len. He said, because you know what they're like, you know what Ronnie's like. So anyway, I got up. I just had this soup. <laughs> Two weeks I had it, a grey worsted soup. <laughs> so I got ready. I thought, I've got to get dressed up. Can't cut this, you know. Anyway, I got up there, got a cab, got up there, I said to the cab driver, will you wait, mate, I won't be five minutes. Went up there. As I walked in where all the table, family tables, they was all down. There's all geezers standing up the wall and this wall, like, oh, oh, oh. And uh, they said, oh, go out there, then. Went out the kitchen. Ronnie was standing right opposite me. He said, come and sit in the chair, then, an old armchair. So I sat in this old armchair and uh, he kept mumming in the, he went into one, right, you know. So I thought, what the fucking hell is he talking about, right? Friends of theirs and friends, you know. Anyway, he said, uh, get hold of him. And two geezer, two of the geezer got hold of him. He, when he turned, I saw all these, these pokers on the gas fire. They were like, what they sharpen knives on, you know. But the big ones, like, and they're using the fish creek for meat market. Anyway, pick one up. He dropped it because the angle was wood and it's too hot. <laughs> and I thought he was just trying to frighten me. But he's got a glove, one of them um, oven gloves, come over with it. And he started, he put it across there. And uh, then he, he put one across, he just stabbed it on across there. Then he went back and got another one. Then he done it across there. And uh, uh, I shut my eyes, I thought, fuck, he's going to kill me now. He said, open your fucking eyes, because I'll burn your eyes out. So I've opened my eyes, set light to my suit, and uh, he said, I'm going to fucking do you now. And I know it was who shouted that at the back. They said, no, Ron, well, not that. And he just switched off like that. He said, go on, you can go now. But people have said so many lies. They said, I was tied to a chair. I wasn't. I was staying up, I was, but I pissed myself, tell the truth. But I saw a, doc, a doctor told me, he said, that's a natural thing, because that's your nerves, right? you know, he said, it's a natural thing. I said, but it's a funny thing about it all. When he burnt me the first time, the others I didn't feel. 
you know, he said, well, that can happen, like, you know. And he said, go, you go now. I went out. Uh, I got a cab driver to take me to Harry Abraham's house. Jeannie come out, his wife. Now, the time I've got there, I've got all blisters coming up on my face. I look like a fucking elephant man. I did. Mm. Next morning, I had a blister come up right like that. It, honestly, <laughs> all this, I had none of this here. This eye was shut, and the next morning, that, that shut the next that dinner I just one shut. So, um, they kept me in there for about six weeks. You know, got this doctor, strap off doctor, come down and looked at me. Jeannie got me this eye and put on me like, you know. And then the twins had the fucking cheek to say, tell them now a drink with friends now. <laughs> How do you be friends with fucking, they was animals. You know, they they was both as bad as one. They say Reggie was the quiet one. Reggie, Reggie was more vicious, I think, than Ronnie. He, he could be wicked, Reggie, you know. You walked in on, on Reggie, and I know I've read in your book here, you say you walked in on Reggie Cree. Oh, yeah. You were one of the first people to know Reggie's Well, it's only along, only along the road here. We was at a party, and I had my mate's keys in my pocket, and uh, <laughs> thought, like, I want to go home. So I'm trying to find him to give me his car keys. So uh, they said, uh, the fellow who jazzed it was, Connie, he said, oh, he, he took Jeannie upstairs, that was his wife, she didn't feel well. Well, she died now of cancer. So anyway, she go up then, like, you know. I said, OK, come. Gone upstairs, I knocked on the door, went in, and it was empty. I heard a noise, so I thought, oh, well, he's in there. When I went in there, there was Reggie, got a boy over the, bent over the bed, giving him one up there, you know. He's come over to me, I'm stuck, I'm standing there, I couldn't believe it. And he's got his cock out, fully erected. He come out of me, he's fat, got me round the neck, he lift me up in the air, and I'm against the door. <laughs> he said to me, if you breathe a word to this, he said, you're, this is what his famous words were, you'll disappear from the face of the earth. Anyway, when I went in the pub the next dinner time, only up the road here, we all used to meet Sunday dinner time. He said, there was all them fucking bruises round your neck. Why, well, did, did she fan all that? But I couldn't say he'd done it. But then I found out, when I went home, that Reggie and Ronnie had a fight outside the house. Because the, the, the boy that Reggie was giving one up, it was Ronnie's boy. Bobby Buckley, you know? And uh, I never said nothing about that, right till he come out with it in the people. He said he was bisexual, so I thought, fuck it, I'll put it in my book, man, to let people know the truth. And that is the truth, you know. So, people have told so many lies about them. Yeah. Even uh, uh, Flanny, I uh, uh, think she's going, she said, oh, uh, when she went to Dartmoor, uh, Char her and Charlie, see so Ronnie, the geezer, Broadway. Hey, Broadway. Broadmoor, um, the geezer come over to and said, uh, well, to Charlie, would you like to pay him on his bill? 900 quid. How can you make a fucking bill up in an enigma for 900 quid? <laughs> when I first went, I only got about fucking 10 percent a week. <laughs> why, people use the, why do you think people use the name? Why do you think people still build the name up, well, make take, it the legend? Take, um, um, what's her name? Um, Kate Clay. Take her. She's wrote them hard bastards and all that, isn't she? Now, she used to work, she lived in Kent. She used to work making toilet rolls with her mother in a factory. Then she became a disagreement. And then she married Ronnie Cray. So a friend of mine was a reporter. So when he, he went and interviewed her, he said, well, why did you, you're divorcing Ronnie Cray now. He, he said, why do you keep the name Cray? Isn't it better to go back to your single name or your married name, Hudson? She said, no, I'll keep the name because it commands respect. Well, who's going to buy her books? Kate Hudson. But they buy them Kate Cray, and she's earned a lot of money out of it. Right? Good luck for that. When you, you know, when you, when Ronnie Cray passed away, you were one of the only people to speak out about the Crays. Do you still feel as strongly now as you did? You know, have you, have you, you know, you haven't got. At all the shows I've been on television programs, I've always run them. Oh, well, fucking, why, why make them out to be martyrs when they were the fucking animals? Well, animals is too, too good a word to save them. An obvious you know. question, really, but was the East End a better place when the Crays Oh, were it, it was, yeah. I'll tell you what, when um, when they went away, I, see, I was on the Cray case. I only went on the Cray case because they were going to shoot my two kids. 
And Mark says, I was only six and five and six at the time. Do you genuinely believe that letter was from the craze, oh, or do you yeah, think it was, it was from the police? Because I know, like, in oh, your yeah. book, there's a little bit of doubt. You question yourself, in a sense, and you think, maybe... No, in it, I said, hesitate, you know, I didn't know if Nipper Reed had it yeah. sent in or... Or someone they yeah. but the writing yeah. was there. It was unmistakable. It, ah, it's, it's like little, little kids can write better than them. Yeah. You know, and I knew it was their writing. Yeah. But I wondered if it was uh, Nipper Reed had got hold of it or got hold, you know what I mean? Or but then I thought they no, couldn't have done because it's their writing. Would and you? I think they come up with no stamp on the letter. Mm. So they must have come up, give it to someone in the neck to put it up. Very brave to stand up even in nineteen ninety five and oh, say I what you did. Stamp. Did oh, anything yes. happen after yeah. in yeah? yeah. I stabbed there. Yeah. Was that in the 60s? Yeah. yeah. That's our, that's our, the Cray case. Yeah. I got stabbed there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the geezers who done it, they... Uh, <coughs> I was in the spill in Stamford Hill. Yeah. And they'd all had a big... They really had a good thieves. Yeah. Just had a bank, like, a gold or a lot of dough. Anyway, uh, we was in the spill and they all half pissed. And someone, someone's talking about the craze. I don't know this because I'm playing cards. And this is what I found out that someone said, no, he was with the craze, like, like me. But they meant, like, he got done by the craze. So, because when I, when I left, there was a little alleyway outside. They took the bulb out of the light. Well, you know what I mean? I've walked out, and there are about seven, six of them there. They give me a kick in, blood coming out of my ear, just st stabbing me in the back. And, Leg, stab me again. Well, I didn't feel them because they gave me such a kicking. And I recognised one of them. And I was living in Finchley then. And my mate is dead now, um, Johnny Layman. I told him, I phoned him up. I said, I recognised one of them, John. Oh, he said, I know him. I'll go, I'll go around and see him then. Nah. He phoned me up on the afternoon. He said, Is it all right to bring, it, bring him down tonight? He said, Be down about six o'clock. Is that all right? I said, Yeah, all right. But they come down, the geezer give me five grand. He said, we're sorry that happened. And he said, like, we got it all wrong because the craze shot my uncle years ago. And they said, we thought you was on the craze. you fucking joking. I said, I hate them. So they give me five grand. Any repercussions in 95 when you spoke out, you know, when, when Ronnie Cray died, did you have anybody? Did... Oh, I had phone calls. Yeah? Oh, I had to phone the um, phone company cranky phone calls, like, you know, yeah. and I had to phone them up and they monitored all the calls, like, you know, mm -hmm. the calls that was coming in. Great to come back to East End, and I, mean, I respect you for yeah, the fact well, that you didn't walk away from, you didn't walk away from the East End. Well, I've got well, a... Ronnie Hart went to Australia, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Just around the East End, we've been around with Eric, obviously, this DVD's about Eric. Um, we've, yeah. been to, we've been to Pelicis, we've been to, well, you, know, you know, the East End, you live down here, it's your world, you know. But, how's it changed? He's well respected, Eric, from the East yeah. End. Well, give us, a, give us a, little bit, a little bit about Eric. What's, you know, what do you feel about Eric? You know, and uh, how do you, you know... Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, he was never, never a liberty taker. That's one thing. Oh, right, he was friends with the twins. A lot of, a lot of good people were friends with the twins, like, you know what I mean? Like, when they say uh, all this um, protection rackets, all right, they was doing protection rackets, but people did go to them for protection because they knew it was only a matter of time before they went to them. So they thought they'd do it first. And there was a few of them I spoke to, and they said, I said, we are you going to giving them protection for? They said, well, they're going to come out to us and they told us how to do it. And it looks like a favour to them, doesn't it? You know, and that's how it went on. But with Eric, people loved him. My mate, Harry Abraham, loved him. And he, I used to be Harry's driver, and all he ever talked about was him. And that fucking Fraser, what he'd done, he said, uh, on his own, about five of them done it, you know, but they took him in the air, he wouldn't, you know, back in the day, obviously. I've been on a few shows, I was in Nick with him in Wandsworth, you know, but uh, they call him the dwarf. <laughs> Just a small dwarf, that's all he is. <laughs> last, last question for you. <laughs> Have you retired? Uh, me? Well, I've climbed 40 and 50 feet in the air, like when I'm doing these things. I can't hardly climb the stairs now. And uh, I've, I've had 11 angina attacks, I've had three heart attacks, I've had a stroke, and I suffer from vascular disease, like, you know. But I'll tell you what, if I didn't, I'd be at it. <laughs> can't be a good partner. Well, you only nick off a people who can pose a diamond ring or two, don't you? You don't nick off your own. Robin Hood. <laughs> I think that's been oh, a pleasure.
Uh, you're That's welcome. Absolutely brilliant. Nice to meet you. Brilliant. Really, really good. Say hello to Michael when you go out. No, I will. I will, right. definitely. Fantastic. And we'll have a break there, yeah? All right, mate. I hope I broke your camera. <laughs>